Okay, so let's talk skin tone selection with Actions 12 Chroma plus Luma. Um, this is uh, one of the most powerful functions, I think, in the action sets. I want to show it to you individually. Now, if you want to select skin tones on a shot like this, and you know, full disclosure, the shot's completely edited, but it still doesn't matter because it can show you what I'm talking about. Um, if we want to select just the skin tones automatically, we, we know we have some functions, right? So let me show you a counter example first. We're going to go select menu, color range, okay? And immediately there's a skin tone choice, right? And now, you know, at a 24 fuzziness, which is just whatever it is, the default that was there, we're missing a lot, okay? We can see shadows are missing here, details in her chin and shadows. Down the tattoo, which, you know, in Freya's case, the tattoo has a lot of different luminosities. That throws off everything. So we have to really ramp up this fuzziness. Now, never mind the background. We probably could have done a clean subject selection if we wanted to using Photoshop subject selection. So never mind the background. Well, let's just look at her. So we're ramping up the fuzziness to try to get some of this skin tone selected. We still are missing shadows which sometimes is a benefit, but sometimes it's not. We don't want shadows to be removed or reduced on our selection. Sometimes we want that selection full tilt. But now we have a ton of bleed over on her green outfit. It's like, why, why would you have that much bleed over on green? You know, it's not even skin tone. What's happening here? We're wrapping up the fuzziness. Photoshop is doing the best that it can. So we're going to go ahead and try this like at 147 and hit OK. Now we have a selection, OK? I'm going to go ahead and run that selection with a solid color adjustment layer on right red so we can see what the selection is doing. Okay. We can also, of course, hold down Option or Alt and we can see the selection there. But let's go ahead and uh, just turn that off for a minute. Let's do the same idea, but with the action. And that's right here. NBP Chroma Skin Tone Select. This just simply creates a selection that you can do things with. But look at the difference. We're going to hit it. It'll remind you that you should start on a stamp layer or the background layer. Okay. Hit Continue. Now, yeah, it's automatically masking out the subject, which is a pretty straightforward function that you can do. But look already, we're at a fuzziness of 20. We have shadows, t you know, blended in really nicely. The outfit's a lot less involved. And the tattoo is kind of like chopped through, even the other tattoo on your other foot. So we can probably ramp this up to like a 30, maybe even like a 25, maybe even a 23, something like that. You can see all the depth. So let's just, let's just do a counter example to show you. Here we are. We're going to make it a solid color of red once again. Now I need a duplicate of the background because I want to show you guys what toggle these on and off for you. Group that. All right. So here's the selection that we got. Again, ignore the background elements. Here's the selection that we got without the action. We turn that off and here's the selection that we have with the action. Okay. A couple details to pay attention to what's happened. One, let's start with the obvious, the shadows. Okay. We turn on the original one, we see shadows are not involved in the selection. Okay. Not, not as much. Okay. And we have a ton of bleed over. The outfit is really, really selected. The tattoo has a ton of selection on it as well. But if we turn that off, we notice that we have more detail in the, in the tattoo. We have the shadows tended to a lot better and we have the outfit a little less mass. What does this mean? A little bit better. Is that great? Actually, it's a lot better. And the reason why it's a lot better is that a lot of times when you make selections for skin tone. Almost always you're trying to do something like a tone, a color. You're trying to add some hue to it. And the less bleed over, the less likely you have to do some manual masking, right? Let's prove that. Okay. We're going to leave these available to us, both of these layers that have the, uh, you know, the mask on them. Okay. So let's come here and let's add a uh, color grade of some sort. So we're going to go ahead and select the bad one, if you will. Okay. Select that luminosity of the, of the mask. And then let's go to, um, let's go to gradient map. Okay. All right, and then we're going to choose like Freya Skin Shades, one of those, okay? Now, um, we can't see it because we have this on. There we go. No problem there. So there it is. We're going to change the blending mode to soft light, something like that. And we went from this to this. As you can see, yeah, we can mask her out, um, you know, with subject selection. And that's fine. But let's go ahead and uh, duplicate that on top. And we're going to use the good one. We're going to copy the good mask in there, okay? So there's a difference, this and this this and this, okay? The mask, hold down alter option, you can see that it's a lot cleaner. We could clean up the outfit if we really, really wanted to, but as you can see, with since it's minimally involved in the selection, we may not have to. We can just leave it alone, very minimally involved, as opposed to this other one, where the outfit has a lot more spillover and you may or may not like that. So it's a minor difference, but it's enough that it generally makes your selections a little bit more successful. One real way to show how different and success it can be is to do something extreme. So let's go to hue and saturation and we're going to make it to where she's green. I'm going to invert that. But we're going to duplicate it. We need two copies. Like before, I'm going to get a background layer copied over and group it so we can see differences. So turn that one off. 
let's start here. Let's go to our uh, color range. We're going to choose a color range, something reasonable. We don't want too much of the outfit. We're just hoping for the skin. So maybe something like, like that, I guess. Okay, cool. So we have that. Now we're going to come here and we're going to choose invert. And there it is. There's our green color on her. As you can see, off and on, there's a lot of mess up here. You can see the tan from her original tone in there. Not to say that we want to turn someone green, but you know, in case for some reason we want to do something extreme, this is the most extreme possible, right? So let's go back and run the action now. Run our selection. Selection is now pretty good. I like that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Nah, 22, 23. Come up here, turn it on, and then invert that. Now, look at the differences here. I'm going to turn this on and off, okay? So this guy is masked in there. Okay, cool. Off, on, off. Look again, don't, don't, don't look at the background, but look at her. See all this color in here and the shadows that's wrong? That's the Photoshop's original color range. This is our color range. It selects it perfectly. In this particular case, the, the outfit is part of it because it's all green, but we can shift it the other direction and we can see what a difference it makes, okay? So we'll shift this one the other direction as well, just to be thorough, as we can see. This one, this is our original one. It's, it's blended in better because it's red, but this one's a lot more seamless covering the luminosities and whatnot. Let's look at the, the areas that matter on her right here, okay? This is the good one done with the action. Look how clear the selection is, okay? And this one is the one done with the regular color range. They both could have different uses depending on what you're trying to do. But if you really want to select the skin accurately, regardless of the luminosity, as long as it's not pure black, the luminosity will be ignored and the skin will be selected a lot more accurately. And that's the hallmark of using Actions 12 when you separate Chroma and Luma so you can have better selections and better overall functions in your retouch.